Hey guys, welcome to Jackie's Quarantined Kitchen. <laughs> um, my friend Jen thought it would be fun if I made some cooking videos and posted them, and so I've, I'm cooking anyway, so I might as well show you what I'm doing. Um, okay, so I'm gonna make banana bread. Um, I have had bananas for, I don't know, maybe like a week, and Adam keeps wanting to eat them, and I keep telling him no, because I want them to get to this perfect point where everybody else would say, ew, throw those away. I say, no, these are gold. Okay, so what you wanna do is start with three extremely ripe bananas. Now, if you guys have kids watching or kids at home or people who don't like to cook too much, this is a fun job for them because they can be involved and it requires no skill at all, mashing the banana with a fork. So I think it's pretty fun, but here we go. I'm gonna do this really quick. Okay, so this is the consistency we were looking for. Really good and mashed. They smell really fragrant, really yummy. Okay, so now that we have that first part of our recipe, we're gonna put our eggs in. So this recipe calls for three eggs. I know that seems like a lot right now. Some of you guys might not be finding eggs at the store. I think they're restocking them though. I went to Target two days ago, they had eggs and I actually cried. <laughs> It's so embarrassing, but anyway, I got a lot of eggs and I'm not trying to be irresponsible by using three eggs in this recipe But I want it to taste good and I know I'm gonna eat it all. Okay, so anyway, here are my eggs crack them on the counter real quick Now some of you guys have cracking egg fear Don't worry. Just do it. If you're not good at it crack them one at a time into separate bowls in case you Destroy it, but it's kind of hard to mess it up Okay, we have our three eggs now. I'm gonna take my fork and we'll whisk this up separately so that the yolk and the white get combined before I mix it in with the banana. That way it's totally combined. This is also very fun for your um, sous chefs to help you with. Okay, so you add that into your bowl, set that aside, and whisk this all together. Once this is good and mixed together, you see how that's all kind of some chunky banana, but that's all mixed together. We don't see any white separate from the yolk. Now we can add our other ingredients. So this recipe calls for a little honey. If you prefer, you can use maple syrup. It's up to you. Or you can use some brown sugar or white sugar or a combination of the two, whatever you like. But just a heads up, I don't really measure. When it comes to things like honey, sweetener, you don't really need a very specific measurement in my opinion, because it doesn't. the recipe does not depend on this. So. That looks good to me. It's about two tablespoons worth. And now I'm going to add our cinnamon. Gives it that great flavor. Our salt. Now when it comes to salt, I do follow the recipe. So the salt is a quarter teaspoon. You don't want to over salt anything because it will taste terrible, but it will also taste terrible if you don't salt it at all. So please make sure that you're using salt. I'm using pink Himalayan sea salt. You don't have to use that. You can use whatever you like, but this is my favorite probably because it's pink <laughs> and it tastes good. Okay, so we've got all that together. I'm gonna grab a whisk and mix this up. And we're almost done. This is such an easy recipe. Now the recipe does call for some fat. So it calls for, in our case, this one is calling for coconut oil, um, but, um, and that's what I'm gonna use. But if you don't have coconut oil, you can use butter or you can even use olive oil. Sometimes when an amount is so low in a recipe, I will sub out um, something. If it's like canola oil, I don't like to use canola oil. What is a canola? I just don't like to use that. So I'll use olive oil instead. And if it's a little amount, you won't taste it. But I do have some olive oil here and I'm gonna put that right in. It's just a tablespoon. Okay. Now, Normally, I would be adding vanilla to this, but Quarantine Me doesn't have vanilla. So I have almond extract, which is gonna work really well. I love almond, and I'm also using almond flour, so it kind of goes with the whole theme. But if you don't like almond extract, do not use that, because you won't like it. You probably have vanilla at home. You're probably more prepared than me, so use vanilla. If you don't have it, don't worry. If your bananas are really ripe, they're gonna be super flavorful, and you're not gonna have to worry about that. Again, just eyeball it. Looks good. Okay, mixing that up. And now we just have two things left, the dry ingredients. We have the baking soda and the almond flour. Okay, so this recipe calls for two cups of almond flour, which does hurt my heart a little bit because almond flour is so expensive. 
but we're trying to make something a little more gluten-free friendly that isn't totally full of potato starch and rice flours and all those different things. I'm telling myself this is healthier, but who knows if it is. Okay, and then my baking soda. So this calls for one teaspoon of baking soda. My mother-in-law gave me these really cute spoons that say be blessed, I love them. Okay, there we go. I don't think I've forgotten anything. Hopefully not. Has anybody else made a cake or cookies or something and then you realize you've forgotten something and then you try to put it back? It just doesn't work. All right, so this is coming together. Now, I, before I even started taping this, I put my oven on 350 degrees. It's a pretty normal temperature. This is gonna cook at a lower heat, because that actually is kind of low. But this is gonna cook at a lower heat for a longer amount of time. It's gonna take about 40 to 55 minutes. So you kind of, at the end of that 40 minutes, you gotta keep testing it every maybe five to 10 minutes to see how far along your uh, bread is baking. My oven is the worst. So it cooks really unevenly. So yours might too if you have apartment living and you didn't choose your oven. So halfway through, turn around your um, pan in the oven so that it's evenly cooking on both sides. Okay, so here's a trick. This calls for the pan to be sprayed. I don't have spray, I don't wanna buy spray. So what I do is I take a paper towel, I take a little bit of the oil, I put it on, and then I just rub the oil into the loaf pan. By the way, isn't this the cutest pan ever? But you don't have to do this either. You could do this with the olive oil. You can do this with um, butter. Butter is obviously better. Who doesn't like butter? But I'm just using what I have right now. Okay, here's our batter. Looks amazing. Honestly, I want it to be more cinnamony, so I'm gonna add more cinnamon. Now, if you could, I mean, if you wanted to, you can add chocolate chips to this. You can add more nuts. I just figured it already has a lot of nuts in it with the almond flour, but you're more than welcome to add whatever you like to it. So I'm putting this into my loaf pan, spreading it nice and evenly, just like that. And then one last thing. So I am being a little sneaky and this isn't totally healthy. I have about two tablespoons of brown sugar and I'm putting that all on the top. It will get caramelized and so delicious. If you wanted to, if you had extra bananas, I've also seen a lot of food people do this um, and it looks really cool. They take one banana and slice it in half long ways and put the long slices over the top of their banana bread. But then I think it starts to look brown and weird, so maybe don't do that. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna put that in the oven for 40 to 55 minutes. Who knows, we'll see, and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out, okay. So I cleaned up, and um, I'm not really sure how much time has passed, to be completely honest. I forgot to set a timer, but when the smell of whatever you're cooking starts to fill the air really strong, it's a good indication that you're almost done cooking. So I wanna check in on it and show you guys the progress. So good. Okay, so the true test is that you can insert, maybe you don't have an adorable cake tester like I do, but you probably have a toothpick. So you're just gonna insert it in and if anything stays on it, it's not ready to go yet. There's a little bit of crumb, so I think we probably need about 10 more minutes. So I'm gonna set my timer for 10 more minutes, check on it, and I think we're gonna be good to go. Okay, so I waited 10 more minutes, which is really hard for me to do because I really want to eat this. And actually, you should wait longer. Once you have taken it out of the oven, anything that you're baking, you should let cool for, I don't know, maybe at least a half an hour so the consistency is really good. But anyway, let's open the oven. Now that looks perfect. You can see how the brown sugar here has gotten really crispy and crunchy and that will be so delicious and let's do the ultimate test and it goes out it comes it's all ready to go 
All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed.